Now this is where you can beat the casinos, the sports book, and that's why I'm banned. This is where you make the money, not the table games, not the roulette table, not the blackjack table, not the slot machines. These are all chance games. The sports book is where you really make the money. What's up guys, Vegas Dave, I'm super excited. I'm here to meet my boy Luke. We're gonna partner up on a mentorship program to teach people how to handicap their own games and beat the sports books just like I did. You know, like everyone used to say, you can't win unless you bet straight bets. I was living proof. I have tickets of me doing parlays, cashing out hundreds of thousands of dollars. I have futures bets where I made millions. Believe it or not, you make more money on parlays and future bets than you make off straight bets. That's where the key is, like a 401k. When you have a normal, when you work a typical nine to five and you have a 401k, you pretty much just have, that money just gets sucked out of your account. You might be, maybe have like some sort of company matching program. But then you don't think about it, you don't touch it. There's not a lot of creativity in a 401k. I mean, it just I, happens. I know people that put $10,000 in a 401k and a year later it's 10,800 or 11,000. You make a thousand bucks. If you put $10,000 as a bankroll with my picks, people are turning that into 30 to 40,000 in one year. What we're gonna do now is um, you're gonna meet two people. One guy, one guy's name is Ryan. Ryan has been a subscriber to my baseball and football picks for the last four years. Um, I'm kind of curious of what he's gonna say, but it's a kind of a testimonial. You guys are gonna ask him, you know, how you heard about me. He's gonna cover about how he was skeptical to send me money, if he thought I was a fraud, if I was a scammer, and obviously, you know, he's been with me for four years. He's beating me right now to pay me more money to buy a bigger package, a more aggressive package for people that want to treat sports betting like a business, not a hobby, and. Um, that we're going to interview him and you guys are going to hear what he has to say. It's probably a funny story how he heard about me and he's going to tell you the truth. When I win, how I act, how I, when I lose, because I do lose, I'm human, how I act and um, why I keep spending money in my packages because obviously if I wasn't winning and wasn't producing results, he wouldn't be a subscriber to my picks for four years. And the second guy we're going to meet, his name is Reese. Reese is actually a friend of mine and uh, Reese hated me at first because I hooked up with his girlfriend when they were dating so he wanted to kill me. But um, we're good friends now and um, he was a host and he had a baby and I said, Reese, you know, you're such a good guy. You need to, you know, think about your future. I taught Reese how to leverage. He's new. He's going to school right now. He's getting a certification. But I'm the one that got him on the industry. So I'm excited that I'm going to help change his lives. And the great thing about Reese is that he's listening to me. Some people will just nod their head and be like, God, you're so smart, Dave. Well, Reese is different. He's nodding his head saying, Dave, you're so smart, but he's going to Execute. He's gonna listen to my tips, even though they sound unconventional by doing shit for free, giving away stuff. He's gonna listen to what I'm telling him, and that's why Reese is gonna make it. And Reese, you're gonna watch this video 10 years from now, and you're gonna see that you're financially free because you listen to me. And I and I love you, brother, and I can't wait to help change your life. Yeah, well, like I said, the, the futures and stuff like that, like, and just how big of tickets he would bet, because, you know, he posts a lot of his stuff online, like what he did, what he won, and uh, just, like, seeing the futures. Nobody can do that. Like, nobody can, like, the Royals, he was, like, dead confident. Like, Royals, 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 like, they're going to win for sure, like, die hard. And nobody can do that, and they won. And, uh, you know, he called uh, the college uh, basketball just recently. He called... Uh, the Falcons totally blew that, but um, he called them to win the NFC, which was the main thing he said to put money on. But you never see people doing that. So like that, more than anything, was like, you know, the numbers don't lie, you know, paper, money, don't lie. And seeing all that stuff, I was like, okay. And then, yeah, meeting him on top of it, you could definitely tell that he's just uh, a good dude. No, uh, you know, they wouldn't ban him if he was losing. They'd want him to come back. So if they're banning him, I, I got banned, dude. I got banned. Uh, uh, with uh, William Hill, me, I had an account for me, my mother, and my girl, and mine was obviously the bigger one, my girl and my mother's, I kind of did it just for, you know, some money for them. I put three grand in their account, and I put like ten in mine to start, it was at the very beginning of the baseball season, I did it, and uh, 
maybe three months into the season, four months into the season, <clears throat> I was up over 100 grand. I was up to like 120 grand, and my girls and my mothers were up to like 35 grand. And out of nowhere, I tried to log into mine, and eh, uh, whatever, go into my girls on her on a different phone, and eh, same shit. And uh, I was like, what the fuck? And I've had issues like that before, where it's just like something stupid, you know, some with your account. And I call, and they're like, oh no, you should be fine. You got to talk to this dude on Monday. And he finally answers. He's like, uh, I don't want your business anymore. I'm sending you a check. I was like, you can't even give me cash. Like I gave you cash. And he's like, no, I'm sending you a check. Is this address good? I was like, no. And so I didn't want to mention that, you know, my girl and my mom's were blocked. So I had them call separate. Same shit. We don't want your business no more. We're sending you a check. You know, the, that side of Dave, people don't see. He's so smart that I think he out thinks people and gives them the persona that they want to see. That people want to see and build this character and he lets society build this character off of him just to prove how the world is. But in reality, if you get to know the real him, it's not even the Dave. He does not like going out, really. He'd rather stay home with his mom and dad and take care of them. That's why he flew him up there. Just big night and day. I was going out with a girl at the time. She was a waitress at one of the clubs here. And uh, after I broke up with her, I was kind of sprung on her, I guess. And Dave was like, it's Vegas, dude. This is waitresses. Fuck waitresses. Don't worry. And to prove a point to me, he went and he was like, watch, I'm going to sleep with her. And he slept with her. And he called me the next day and told me I slept with Kylie. <laughs> Shouldn't say her name. <laughs> uh, he let me know he slept with her. And, I kind of hated him for a little bit and I guess after a while I kind of like stuck it in and was like, I see your point on this whole road date thing. I mean, I say 90% of everyone in the world don't listen to their parents. I think everybody's parents told them to go to school, go to college after school. It's, it's the way you bond with a certain person that changes the relationship and I think the way that Dave showed me respect and how much he cares, that really makes me respect him. and look up to him in a different level where I need to listen to someone like this. I mean, my parents, my dad respects him with everything. Uh, my dad's exact words is, people that are not your blood don't do this for people. You know, Dave's not my blood family and he takes care of me like I was his little brother to him. Again, this is my good buddy Dave. What's up? How are you? Good. never a problem. I was, like a, I was an open book. I don't know. It's just maybe my personality because people be like, I can't believe you just said that, you know, but I'm, I was very honest. One thing with me, very honest, very straightforward, like, hey, we're going to go to my table, but I fucked this girl, that girl, and that girl, but we're all friends now. And I just cleared it out of the way because if they can't deal with it, then it wouldn't have been a good relationship anyways. Uh, my personality is a little bit different, so I need to make sure they can accept that and they can deal with that. So for me, it was always honesty. A lot of guys like to hide shit and like I'm just, for me, I was an open book. And I think girls appreciate honesty and an open book because most guys are liars, creeps, and they just want to get pussy. And they're going to lie their face off, spit whatever game there is to close the deal. And I think girls, especially in Vegas, hear it every single day. You might fool a, a, an Oregon waitress, but not a Vegas waitress. What do you think about talking, what do you think about interviewing the girls and asking the girl questions versus you talking about your life to the girl? Well, our, my first date, I'm very strategic. I'll, my thing is I always go to dinner. And that dinner is a fucking interview. You know, I'll, I know in the back of my head, like, hey, so I ask them, like, how old are you? Well, I pretty much know how old they are. Do you have any kids? Hopefully they don't, because I don't want baggage. Um, I ask about their family. Are your parents still married? It's not like I prejudge them on that. I just kind of know, I want to know what their, their values are, you know? And I kind of like, hey, I throw it out there, like, do you want to have kids? Also, I'm like, hey, are you on birth control? Like, if you got pregnant, would you have the kid now? Like, so I like to fucking push the limits. So I know if I actually get this girl fucked up, is she gonna have an abortion or is she gonna uh, keep it? Like, that's how crazy I, in depth I am. And we'll talk about the food, but I'm always, they don't know I'm interviewing the whole fucking time. So like, what do you like to do? How often do you drink? How often do you go to the clubs? I find out their activity. So I know if this girl's a party girl or she's like, oh, I was like, how often do you talk to your parents? So do I know if, if I like this girl a lot, would she be a good mother? So I'm just pre-screening them, but they don't fucking even know it because no guys, do this. Most guys at dinner will talk about the clubs and their favorite sports team.